Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're listening in the world. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that he who believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Sorry, I just woke up. My voice is a little froggy. That is a key word. Believe. It does not give us a green light to sin. We don't want to sin. We live for Jesus. And the way things are looking, he's going to bring us home. Boy, this year would be great, wouldn't it? We don't know what the day or the hour. But things are definitely intensifying. So when you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, your sins are washed clean. God sees everybody's heart. God sees your heart. If you've stumbled to dust yourself off and stand back up. Perfect, perfect example is if our kids make a mistake. Mom, I'm sorry. Dad, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Nope. Go away. You're not forgiven. We don't say that. Of course they're forgiven. It's our children. We give them a hug. We say, I love you. We'll get through this. It's just like our Heavenly Father. He sees our heart. And I promise you, we are going home soon. All hell's about to break loose in this world. I feel everything's going to happen at once. The world has no idea what's about to happen. It's really sad. We see it. We see Jesus about to return and we are going home. Hal Turner is reporting. Five Russian doomsday planes are in the air. Over 300 Russian time. Shut off transponders mid-flight. Five Russian doomsday aircraft are in the air over Russia. Or have landed after shutting off transponders. Near there. Ural, Ural Mountain. Including aircraft PA-96024. IDRS D309, which is the presidential plane. While no one could be sure who, if anyone, is actually on these government evacuation aircraft, which took off out of Moscow and having shut their transponders off, we cannot know the exact landing site. It is very disconcerting to see this type of military aircraft activity inside Russia at this ungodly hour. In particular, the presidential aircraft shut off its transponder off after crossing over the uh, Ural Mountains. Did they then make a U-turn to land at Mount Yamantu? I know I said that wrong, I'm sorry. Y-A-M-A-N-T-A-U. So that mountain, along with Kravinsky Mountain, are claimed by the United States of being home to a large secret nuclear facility or bunker, or both. Large excavation projects have been observed by U.S. satellite imagery after the fall of the Soviet Union as, re as recently as the late 1990s. During the government of Boris Yeltsin's, Yelp, Boris Yeltsin, sorry, during the Soviet era, two military garrisons, and possibly a third, were built on that site. These garrisons were unified into the closed town of, I'll, I'll spell this out, oh, Mezagori, Mezagori, in 1995, I'm sorry, 1996. And the garrisons are said to house 30,000 workers, each served by large rail lines. Repeated U.S. questions have yielded several different respond, responses from the Russian government regarding that mountain, including it is a mining site, 
a repository for Russian treasures. Treasure, treasure. <laughs> so, I just woke up. I'm so sorry. I literally just opened my eyes like about five minutes ago. A food storage area and a bunker for leaders in case of nuclear war. Map below shows the location. Responding to questions regarding that moment in 1996, Russia's defense ministry stated the practice did not exist in the defense ministry of Russia of informing foreign mass media about facilities. Whatever they are, they're under construction in the interest of strengthening the security of Russia. In 1997, a U.S. congressional finding related to the country's National Defense Authorization Act for 1998 stated that the Russian Federation kept up a deceptive and denial policy about the mountain complex after U.S. officials had given the uh, Cheyenne Mountain complex tours to Russian diplomats, which the finding stated does not appear to be consistent with the lowering of strategic threats, openness, in cooperation that is the basis of the post-Cold War strategic partnership between the U.S. and Russia. So why are these Russian military government evacuation aircraft in the air right now over Russia at this strange hour? Why have they shut off their transponders mid-flight? On Sunday, um, this is Medvedev has made ominous remarks, nuclear 9-11. Well, today he's 9-11. On Sunday, Dmitry Medvedev, Deputy Chairman of Russia's Federation Council, made a post on his official Telegram account, calling it a few words on the eve of 9-11. In it, he derided the U.S. What he called its arrogance and disgusting narcissism among Western nations and its universal arrogance on any issue. Near the end of the post, he also made the ominous prediction that the U.S. would suffer another 9-11-style attack, but with a nuclear or biological component. Without suggesting outright that Russia would be the nation to launch the attack. If there's more news about this, I will um, keep you guys updated. But I'm not worried in any way, shape, or form. I'm ready to go home. I'm so ready to go home. gonna be soon. You just gotta hang in there. Keep looking up, keep listening. Our Savior, Jesus, is coming back very soon. And we are on our way home. God bless you. Have, hope you have a wonderful week. And if there's any more news about this, I will be back on. Have a wonderful day.